Alright! Hey, Derby fans! Who's ready for more Roller Derby? Well, thank you! Has anybody joined us that wasn't here for the first bout, just out of curiosity? Anybody? 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 I'm just curious, yeah. Woot woot! Um, no, anyhow, right, no. Uh, if you're joining us on Twitch for the first half of this uh, evening, wonderful, welcome in. Uh, we are getting ready to get started with the bombshell, excuse me, we just saw the bombshells, the Brutal Beauties and the Runaway Brides. My pleasure to welcome it to the announcer stand, Cheryl's. Thank you, hello! Are we ready for some derby action? All right, so it is my distinct pleasure to let you know, one second, let me pull up this here, and let me look under that thing. <laughs> and then the he, and then the he, and the who. Uh, all right. Our first team to take the track for your second bout this evening between the Runaway Brides and the Brutal Beauties is the Runaway Brides. All right, drawing together as a pack, wearing their white fit with the maroon numbers tonight. This is the Runaway Brides. Number double zero, top of the roster as always, Nova Kane. Number D20, D&D's Nuts. Number 25, Night Mary. Number 34, Pretty Hurt Machine. Number 38, NC Jammer. Number 101, Hurricane May. Number 151, Ash Smashem. Number 310, Full Metal Anarchist. Number 420, Astro Thought. Number 623, Hollywood. Co captain of the Runaway Brides. Number 4, Cherry Kiss. And your captain of the Runaway Brides, number 95, Lightning the Queen. Coaches tonight for the Runaway Brides, Cryptic Callie and Milani Mengler. Next up on the track, we have the second team of this bout, the Brutal Beauties. for the Brutal Beauties, we have number one, two, or number 12, Maximum Hoverdrive. Number 17, that's Bitch Please. Number 23, Murder Mittens. Number 33, Mary Morphosis. Number 52, Gnarly Quinn. Number 113, that's Kansas City. Number 131, Muerta. 172, Pikachu. 616, that's Aunt Tifa. 925, Evil Twin. 2011, that's Colette Razorcat. Co-captain of the Brutal Beauties, that's 011 Skeletori. And the captain of the Brutal Beauties, the one, the only, 2187, that's Princess Leia. <laughs> Assisting on the bench tonight, we have Coach Stinkenstein and Coach Mimi Mahler. There are your competitors. As we said, Runaway Brides tonight wearing their new outfits this year. Those are the white outfit with the maroon numbers, which I think is a wonderful touch, honestly. I, I honestly will non-sarcastically and completely seriously consider myself really good at like uniform taste. And this is like one thing where I'm like, my opinion's right and everybody else is incorrect <laughs> kind of thing. Like Paul Lucas, I personally don't get along with Paul Lucas and haven't for 20 years. A few people are gonna get that, but trust me. Anyway, the bride's jerseys look sharp with those new numbers on the back. 
uh, Brutal Beauties in pink as usual. They, they uh, debuted these last year, and these are kind of the, the uh, work shirt looking pink outfits for the beauties. First two jammers are Cherry Kiss for the bombshells. And that's going to be Princess Slaya for the Brutal Beauties. Cherry. Princess Slaya trying to get out behind a three wall, a strong three wall there of blockers. Cherry Kiss out for the brides and now catches up to the pack, runs into a, a nicely formed wall of pink jerseys at the back of the pack. And out the front of the pack goes your jammer for the Brutal Beauties. So, oh, we sure can, absolutely. Anyway, that is the end of the jam. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to it. Four points for that first jam for the Runaway Brides after the uh, beauties were able to keep that to one scoring pass with their jammer getting out. Lining up now on the jammer line is going to be Evil Twin for the Brutal Beauties, and that's Holly Hood for the Runaway Brides. Hood tries to take the low and is blocked there by Colette Razor Cat. Both jammers are still in. It always happens. As soon as I say both jammers are right, still exactly. in, one of them gets out. Right? It's like, it's like breaking up a no-hitter. The announcer, the, announcer the announcer has talent. And again, now the Beauties are able to get their jammer out right in succession to try to keep this to one scoring attempt for the Brides. Yeah. Hollywood mid-pack runs up kind of into the back of her own blocker as Max Maximum Overdrive did well. And Hood, wow. Hood to the inside and with typical Hollywood flair, rolls along on like half a skate wheel along the inside coping to get clear of the pack. Sometimes I feel like they have magnets on the skates with the way it that some skaters right. are able to stay on the track with like one foot. It's insane. So, Brides with the standard four once again. We now have Cherry Kiss is out there for the Brides again. And that's Bitch Please jamming for the Brutal Beauties. Cherry mid-pack runs into some defenders, bobbing and weaving, gets blocked off. And uh, now, uh, whoops, Slaya just came off, just barely came off. From my angle, I didn't think she did, but then Cherry took off. So, Cherry's not one to willingly accept a cut track penalty. I'm going to say Cherry's probably right as opposed to the mostly blind guy up here. Meanwhile, Bitch flees out of the pack for the Brutal Beauties. Cherry blocked off twice. Good blocking at the back of the pack. Yes. That's the pivot down there, Princess Slaya. Delivering nonstop hits there. Yeah, excellent blocking at the back of the pack. Just Jamming next up for the Brutal Beauties, we have Skeletori. And that's gonna be Full Metal Anarchist for the first time for the uh, Runaway Brides. Bringing out one more blocker. That's Tierney there joining the track. And indeed, Tierney. On for the Brutal Beauties. Uh, we had t uh, two points, excuse me, for the Brides, 10 points total. I do like that the uh, the sub jerseys tonight are, there's 23 and uh, 33 are both spray painted on. I like the touch. You know, honestly, duct tape doesn't always stick. It gets the job Penny, done. Pennies get ripped off, you know what I mean? Spray paint, be sure. Permanent, it's yes. permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, fighting through the pack, getting out, Tierney at the front of the pack was trying to, excuse me, murder mittens. That's Full Metal Anarchist yeah. out as a lead jammer for the Brides. Yeah. And now getting out and Full Metal Anarchist blasting through on a scoring pass. Skeletori gets out second and is closing in. Full so now Metal Full Anarchist trying to get a couple more points but then calls it off. All right, we'll check the score from the infield there. Full Metal Anarchist puts five on the board to be exact, so 15-0 so far in the very early going. She Brides was flying. It was absolutely flying. Brides have had all four lead jams to this point. We're gonna have a timeout to think a little bit more about the early goings on. I already see three regulators talking, so that's gonna probably be an official timeout. So we'll take a, a break from the action here in the very early going. We didn't have our first, I don't know if you're probably aware because you were out there. Our first time out in the uh, first bout did not happen until 10.37 of the second quarter. About 10.30 at the second quarter is when the first stoppage in play happened besides the quarter break. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, it's all a blur. <laughs> I, but that's what I'm saying, but like, no. I mean, honestly, a, a couple people were like, that moved at breakneck speed. I said, there were no timeouts. There was nothing, no like discussions, no OTOs, no team timeouts, no challenges, 
nada. It was rocket fast. And so, yeah, you, you weren't perceiving it strangely. Meanwhile, back to it we go. Jam number five. This will be Cherry Kiss once again. And Cherry Kiss able to bob and weave through the pack and get out. Princess Slaya hands the star forward for the Brutal Beauties and switches to defending. And the new jammer knocked down. I think that's Bitch Please out there. That with is the Bitch Please. Pivot Struggling strike. there against uh, 101. I believe that's May blocking. Just not letting Bitch out. And Cherry Kiss around the outside. Getting clear now, Bitch Please, out of the pack as well for the Brutal Beauties. So here comes Cherry Kiss for the Brides, weaving to the high side. Uh, ducks around that last blocker. Now two more blockers in the way. And that'll do it. The uh, Cherry Kiss calls it off. Oh, trucking right along. Got eight more points for the Runaway Brides. We've got Evil Twin for the Brutal Beauties, Holly Hood for the Runaway Brides, both starting right here in front of us. And we're looking like the track is a little bit lighter on skaters. That was Skater 101 picking up an arms on the Brutal, or excuse me, on the Runaway Brides. Twin is out as your lead jammer. Just look at her flying, but we do have a jammer race. Oh, I was going to say Holly, Hood's got, Holly Hood has gone into drive, as I like to say. And when Holly Hood goes into drive and really puts it into fourth gear, uh, Evil Twin went ahead and called the jammer race. So Holly Hood forcing the call off, as one would think. I'm and pretty then, sure you can hear, like, the Jaws music playing. Yeah, well, yeah, and also, like, let, let, let's also point out that, like, it took her, like, the entire length of the back straightaway to coast to a stop as fast yeah. as she was barreling along, just kind of leisurely letting all that speed bleed off. So, yeah, yeah, powerful skater, very fast on the pursuit, and that's why you do the pursuit is to force out the call off. And Twin was doing fantastic as well with that, just immediately taking off. Yeah, so we did have a timeout stoppage in the action. So it is a team timeout for the Brutal Beauties, and they are talking things over. We'll take a second to look at a couple more of our sponsors and let you know about some of the people that have been outside this evening. So yeah, tonight outside, out in our little vendor area, out of doors, we had uh, we got fluff pillow creations, handcrafted pillows and pillowcases, handcrafted wearables, tank tops, t-shirts, and garments of all kinds, pants and shorts. For the love of dogs is out there. We have natural pet treats and cute accessories. Toys to t-shirts, we can custom embroider as well. And the Psychic of Levine, a psychic spiritual insight, incense, sage crystals, candles, palm readings, tarot card reading, that is our vendors outside. We'll tell you about our food options after this jam. Meanwhile, Cherry Kiss for the Brides is out. Yep, and that was Slaya as jammer for the Brutal Beauties. Slaya still stuck in the pack there, fighting along turn one, still trying to get out. As Cherry Kiss is coming for her scoring pass. I, can't, I think it's the first scoring pass. That would be the first scoring pass. Now Cherry out, and... Cherry trying to pick up that jammer point from Christmas Leia. Both jammers coming back around. And Cherry does. Cherry able to swing high and outrun Princess Leia just enough to get a hip in front, and that's what she did. Yep. Turned around, back in first, called it off. Got all five of those points. Runaway Brides up to 28. We've got Skeletori at the jammer line for the Brutal Beauties, and that's Full Metal Anarchist for the Brides. With eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Full Metal Anarchist tries to take the low. It's blocked there by 2011. I believe that's Colette Razorcat struggling in the back against that three wall of beauty's blockers. Skeletori fighting in the front there, trying to get past uh, Nightmare, and I believe that is D&D's Nuts and Nova. Full Metal Anarchist gets out on the low and is our lead jammer for the Runaway Brides. Skeletori is still struggling there against that wall of Runaway Brides as Full Metal Anarchist comes around for a first scoring pass, is sent to the infield, has to reset behind a full pink wall, which Nova tries to assist with by doing a sweep to the low. Metal knocked to the infield one more time and gets up just to call it off, essentially. So 
had enough of that getting knocked to their knee pads nonsense. Brides put five up on the board. So we are looking at this time, jamming for the first time for the Brutal Beauties, that's Kansas City. Kansas City skating for the their uh, home team, the Valkyries, earlier tonight. Now subbing for the Brutal Beauties and jamming for the first time in uh, AZDD for their sub team. And Cherry Kiss. <laughs> Who you've seen jam enough, I don't even have to. No, I kid. Uh, breaking free is Cherry Kissel on the inside. Sid takes off the helmet cover, now looking to fight past Lightning the Queen, which is usually identified as a challenging task. And then Cherry Kiss, oh yeah, Cherry Kiss along the inside and using that banking to her advantage. Spin, pirouette through the pack, quicker than you can blink an eye. 34 seconds left on the jam clock. Cherry Kiss coming around for another score and pass is able to get out. Now Sid spun off the track. We've had a star either passed or stashed. It's been passed and is still stashed. That's gnarly Quinn trying now to get clear. And spun off again. Cherry Kiss weaves through the pack on another scoring pass for the Brides with nine seconds left on the jam clock. Cherry making her way around one more time to try to pick up some more points. Goes in, back first. Crashes into a couple of skaters, takes a tumble. So I guess it kind of depends on where the butt landed as far as how many points there were. We'll just have to wait to hear from the refs to see if they were able to pick up those points or not. And 19, 19 Woo. points on four scoring passes for Cherry Kiss during that jam. So almost, almost double headlights, almost. But on the second flash, one of the headlights did not quite come all the way on. Jamming next is going to be Evil Twin for the Brutal Beauties. And I believe that is Holly Hood jamming for the Runaway Brides. And that is once again. 5.09 to go here in the first quarter. Checking on the blocking situation up ahead there. Yeah, big collision there with a couple of skaters getting knocked around. Holly Hood to the front of the pack, ducks to the inside and takes off. Now Evil Twin is gonna try to go up between a couple of blockers, kinda tries to tap dance around one, stays up, gets around NC Jammer. Now to the high side and gets clear for the Brutal Beauties. Holly Hood sliding in, accidentally takes out D&D's nuts from behind, but as scary as it is to see somebody get rolled up on from behind and go down unexpectedly, looks like D was okay. Evil Twin, fin uh, excuse me, forcing the call off and forcing Holly Hood to finish the jam. And we look at here, now we've got our first pa we've got our, ha excuse me, Hurricane May is on the jammer line. That's, uh, which took me a second because her number is t yellow on a white background. <laughs> but yeah, Hurricane May wearing a sub jersey and jamming for the brides and is out and clear. Princess and Leia there fighting against a wall of Ash, Astro, and I believe that was Mary there. That is Mary at the back of the pack. Definitely watched Mary do lots of really good, and that was a good jump by Hurricane May. I'll pause my observation to say nice. Meanwhile, definitely saw Mary do plenty of defense while in the uh, minor assaults, and this, of course, is Mary's second adult league game, so has she, not changed. She's it's a tough blocker. Tough blocker, solid, uh, especially, solid, solid. right. Yeah, and played against, you know, played against grown-ups and mashups enough, so yeah, yeah definitely no, no culture shock her joining the Runaway Brides this year. I've been absolutely wrecked by Mary before, and it was oh, fun. Oh, yeah, you're right, yes. <laughs> While she was like 16 and stuff yes. like that, right. There, yeah. I've said it before, I'll say it again, the juniors are terrifying. So meanwhile, there goes Ooh, Hurricane May and a, a nice little jump to get by at the back of the pack. That was Princess Slaya. We're gonna have a stoppage in play. Nope, May rolls over, gets back up. We're not gonna have a stoppage in play. Yeah, you, you, everybody saw May basically barely crawl back to the Valkyries bench with about four minutes to go in the first bout. Yeah, I guess 45 minutes and a Gatorade is all she needed because now she's out there jamming for the Runaway Brides and then just got dump trucked again and landed on her back. And I'm like, well, now shirt just gets up again like Raiden in Mortal Kombat, just boom, on her feet. Like, what? How? How? You just, what? Anyway, meanwhile, oh, to be young. that's Derby, right? But I mean, <laughs> honestly, like that's Derby. You just go out there and do more of it. Why yeah. not? You're here. Heck yeah, throw me a jersey. Spray paint a number on the back of a pink shirt, I'll join you. <laughs> Meanwhile, there goes, fighting that, through the pack. Yeah, and now lead jammer for the uh, beauties. 
Lead jammer for the beauties is Skeletori. That's Skeletorius lead jammer, Full Metal Anarchist, jamming for the Runaway Bride. Yeah, Full Metal Skeletori Anarchist. Skeletori coming for her first scoring pass, trying to get past that last blocker, Hood. The white wall recycles as Full Metal Arnicus is, strugg is struggling against uh, Brutal Beauty's wall of Muerta and Max. Tori was able to get out and is coming around for another scoring pass. I would like to point out that in the middle of all that chaos, while uh, while Shirls was announcing that, I watched Novocaine absolutely eliminate maximum overdrive in the front straightaway. So fans of defense and blocking and whatnot, that was a uh, rewind the tape on that one. Post a clip of that to, to, uh, to uh, your reels later on. Holy heck, that was a block and a half. Meanwhile, we are looking at for the Brutal Beauties. They're on the board, nine points. Brutal Beauties yeah, I've gotten on the board. So we have 69 to nine at the moment with it'd be about a minute left in the first quarter when this jam kicks off. Cherry Kiss, who's been extremely effective already for the Runaway Brides once again. And we do have a light pack out there. It looks like we the Runaway do, yeah. Brides picked up two penalties. Brutal Beauties picked up one. Yeah, so the bri uh, Brides only two blockers. All they've got is Astro and Mary. So bitch please, as I was about to say, for the Runaway Brides now. Just one blocker to deal with at the moment, trying to kind of give the head, head bob, the head bob, not able to get there. Cherry Kiss goes by. Your defender at the front of the pack, Lightning the Queen, drifts off the track as well, so Bitch Please gets to go out. I just let my microphone drop to my stomach for no reason whatsoever because I'm a professional announcer, darn it. Meanwhile, fighting through the pack or trying to is Cherry Kiss. And that wall of defenders for the Brutal Beauties uh, was very stout at the end of that and kept Cherry from getting through and finishing a full scoring pass. So we had two points on the board for the Runaway Brides. We are approaching our last jam of the first quarter at this point. And we've got Evil Twin number 925 and on the jammer line for the Runaway Brides, I'm never gonna get tired of saying this this entire season. On the jammer line for the Runaway Brides, number 25, Nightmare. It's a Love fantastic that. name. But just, just getting to say number 25 is jamming for the brides feels like it's been baking in the oven for about eight years now. <laughs> the Nightmare has been a runaway brides fan since I think she joined the league when she was like yeah. 10. Yeah. It's, I remember seeing her in yeah. the little so to see, Yep, so to see her be on the team now and jamming for them is honestly pretty special for me as a, as a league spectator. Mary does get out. However, your lead jammer is... Evil Twin, and Evil Twin, a solid block there by Holly Hood, so Twin gets back up to calls it off. So, two straight lead jams for the Runaway Brides here to close out the first quarter. Excuse me, two straight lead jams for the Brutal Beauties to close out the first quarter. I'm not exhausted from that first. I. Why would you be tired? I'm really tired. My We're all just doing our best. Right, no, I kid. No, obviously, Cheryl sitting next to me was just out there, you know, grinding in the defensive trenches for two and a half hours. So I kid, I just sit up here and talk. I'm just winded is all. We're into the quarter break. At the moment, that was four points for the Brutal Beauties. Runaway Bride 71, Brutal Beauties 13. And we'll be back in about four minutes and 30 seconds with the second quarter.
We are back to it. 15 minutes to go in the second quarter until halftime. Welcome back, Derby fans. Runaway Brides quickly out. Lead jam here in the second quarter. First jam of the second that quarter. That is NC Jammer for the that Runaway is. Brides. NC has yet to jam here for the Brides tonight. Jammed often again for the Valkyries earlier. And oh, big collisions. Astro tries to get up, tumbles over a skater as well. And that was NC to the outside. Meanwhile, oh, uh, Lightning takes a hard fall down too. Adjust the armband, gets back up. Meanwhile, Skeletori stashed the star, puts it back on. Here comes NC on a scoring pass right up into the back of somebody there. Contact absorbed by Maximum Overdrive, and then NC calls it off. I've got to say that the, uh, again, I, uh, I tell people sometimes, if, you, if you've watched a lot of these bouts, you probably have heard me say, I'm the son of an offensive lineman, and until my leg went weird, I was supposed to play football. So just the fact that I looked down at the bench at Ash Masham sitting down after getting a penalty and just violently shaking her head without saying a word or looking at anybody, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, you can't look. You'll get, a, you'll get an insubordination. <laughs> just, you know, you love it when you see somebody who just do little sports things like that. Meanwhile, out to lead jam here in the second jam of the second quarter is Princess Slaya. Princess uh, Slaya picks up four points for the Brutal Beauties. That so. brings the score up to 17 to 79. Runaway Brides in the lead. 13 minutes left here on the second quarter. Yeah, so we're looking at uh, Evil Twin and Cherry Kiss. Twin again back here and Cherry right behind her as the... They literally like have the do. same exact posture. Yeah, they, they really do. And the twinning. funny part is that Cherry's posture is the same as Hood's, so whenever Hood and Twin are out there, they also look the same. Oh, Twin you almost should, getting yeah. out on the low there with a little hop. Ash was able to hit her into the infield, so she has to reset. Both jammers still in. Twin now trying to fight against those last couple of Brides blockers. Cherry, Cherry Kiss now gets through the pack, gets out. And oh, looking around, look out. There's a block. Evil Twin knocked down. Lightning the Queen. Uh, wielding that hip uh, with authority as she is wont to do. Just knocks Evil Twin basically kind of out of the out of the picture there for a moment. Evil but Twin opting to play a little bit of jammer defense there as Cherry Kiss was coming around to score some points. And again, now Cherry weaves around to the outside, and Cherry looks like Cherry's going to let the clock burn down. I was going to mention, it's always amused me a little bit. Um, and of course, again, uh, you'll know this if you're part of the league, but Cherry Kiss and Lightning McQueen are sisters, and they're both the daughters of Novocaine. And it's always been an unending source, and, and an endless source of amusement that Cherry Kiss jams just like her aunt, Hollywood. <laughs> stands on the track right here, like, I mean, Hood's busy and focused and good, but Cherry stands just like that, right, hand on the knee, hand on the rail, bent at the hip. I mean to tell you, I've seen it enough. It's identical. And I've yet never noticed it. And yet, but the thing is, is that Lightning looks just like Nova when Lightning blocks. You're right. So Lightning plays just like Nova, and Cherry is not Hood's daughter and plays just like Hood, down to standing exactly the same at the jammer line. Again, I, again, I see these things a lot, and it just cracks me right up. Anyway, there goes Hollywood. I mean, even back here to the point <laughs> they, they even stand in the same place. I, I love it. Anyway, there goes uh, Hood now. Meanwhile, Wright tries to go right in the middle and break those two blockers apart. They managed to hold long enough to at least sap Hood's momentum and basically stopped it. It looks like Murder Mitten's got the worst of that one down there. So. Speaking Cherry. of like family dynasties too on the Runaway Brides, I just right. want to point out that it's not just Cherry, Lightning, and Nova. Right. Uh, Callie and Nightmare are actually sisters as well. Right. Obviously, yes. I mean, obviously that has a big part to do with why Mary is such a diehard Brides fan is yes. because Mary grew up cheering for Callie the last five years, I want to say. Right? Yeah. yeah, Callie graduated Cal before COVID, so it's been six, yeah, seven yeah, years. Yeah, no, Callie's been a bride for a while. Right. So, yeah, so Mary, obviously, it's just, it's cool. You know, I like that she wound up on the brides. It's There's cute. a draft process, but I like that it was like, oh, my gosh, of course Mary is on the brides, and I just love that for her. And, again, it's like I said, that was the one I got choked up at. Aww. We were just talking about things I've gotten choked up at while announcing. That was one. Getting to say that number 25 is jamming for the brides. Yeah. Nobody else is ever going to get to do that for the first time. It's very heartwarming. Ding. Yeah, I like announcing things for the first time. I got a knack for that. Meanwhile, 
Timeout is continuing. That was the Beauty's second first half timeout. The Beauties are now out of timeouts for the first half, so they do get one back for the second half, but just the one. Yeah, let's talk about the food yeah. trucks really quick. Let you know halftime coming up. And a great time for that is I just sit here and muse about Derby. Yeah, you hit that. We got Muff Waffles. It looks like outside one of the vendors that we have is Muff Waffle Town. Come on down to Muff Waffle Town. We have vegan and gluten-free friendly options for anybody who's down. They also have corn dogs. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah head, it's hard head to on read. The, yeah, it's, no, they have <laughs> it's it deep fried, wonderful goodness. You know, think fair food, kind of. Yeah, w and, uh, but vegan, gluten free, dairy free. They got yeah. Gaba came in and said they have everything friendly, is how Gaba put it. That so. sounds delicious. Right, and then we also have the Ziki truck, the uh, the yeah. Mediterranean food. Yeah, uh, you've got some of that. You can speak to that. Apparently, that's oh, also wonderful. I haven't chomped it yet, but I will. Right. So we're back to it. We have 10.54 to go in the second quarter. Cherry Kiss is out there for a power jam for the Runaway Brides. So the Runaway Brides now have a power jam. And That's I, yeah, wow. Princess Leia just locking right. Cherry Kiss back. Princess Astro came in to lend a hand. Slaya made it a personal mission down there. And then finally, Cherry's able to get through. But, and again, I, you know, I, I like to say this, and I have a skater up here now to back me up on this, but most of the strategy of power jam is not to stop it is to slow and you don't necessarily you can stop them if you want but at the end of the day you want to slow them at the very least and they ate 30 seconds off the truck clock yeah and now eating another 12 off the clock with that defense and there you go that'll shorten the power jam considerably yeah definitely for the uh power jams i mean you do want to stop them uh yeah but both teams are trying to keep it slow the Brutal Beauty's trying to keep the, the jammers slow or yeah. stop, and yeah. the Runaway Brides just in general trying to keep the, the pack slow. Yeah, and, and, and of course it, it gets harder the fewer blockers you have. Like obviously yeah. the, the, the Beauty's were able to unite a four wall at the front of the pack there and, you know, deter the blocker. But yeah, you will, you, will, you will see definitely, again, that was a very productive, it took Cherry Kiss until there was 33 seconds left on the clock to get clear, and in the Power Jam, that's huge. It does look like, however, a couple of white blockers there picked up penalties. Yeah. I'm seeing lightning in the box and Astro thought in the box as well. It looks That's like right. that was for a directional block, perhaps two directional blocks for each skater. Jamming up next for the Runaway Brides, we have Full Metal Anarchist, and that is Tori out is as Tori. a lead jammer for and the Tori's Brutal out. Beauties. Yeah, you, you teased it. The lack of blockers out there ended up being problematic for the Runaway Brides. So... Tori's out, and the Brides Jam are not out yet. Yeah, the Brutal so Beauties yeah. there forming a four wall for a second there, trying to hold Full Metal Anarchist in. Max and Cole at Razor Cat trying to keep that wall tight. Yeah, Beauty's defense has played really well here in the second quarter so far, honestly. They have come out here with a renewed vigor, it would seem. And uh, that uh, the, the defense on the Power Jam, solid, obviously. And then now they've uh, gotten their jammer out as well on this time around and they've held full metal anarchist in so this i mean basically is now turning into an ad if so facto power jam for the beauties with uh full metal anarchist serving as the goad yeah the runaway turned, yeah. rides there trying to run right. away in those last few seconds trying to protect points uh okay. that was hood and nova checking on that from the infield that is nine big points for the brutal beauties there most of two scoring passes. However, in the pursuit of that, oh, we have a power jam for the Runaway Brides in response to that. So the nine points come at a cost. Switching over is the regular jammer. I was going to say Hurricane May was getting ready to jam, but power offense being special teams usually requires a certain skill set of a certain people. So Cherry Kiss takes over, even though Hurricane May is probably like the second best power jammer. <laughs> Is you be up, but you're gonna put Cherry out there when you're running your power O. So, ducking to the inside, getting through is Cherry. So this time able to get out pretty quickly on this power jam with 47 seconds left on the jam clock. Brutal yep. Beauty is trying to keep the pack fast, hoping to tire out Cherry there, trying to stay in front and in control. The Runaway Brides, of course, opting to try and keep the blocker split and to hold a goad. That's Leia in the back there fighting against Lightning. Yeah, and I'd like to point out again, here's one of those defensive things that I loved. Uh, Lightning the Queen was blocking Princess Slaya herself and then was able also to, at the same time, was able to kind of hold Slaya in place and keep Slaya from blocking Cherry. Like, you saw Slaya try to go, and Lightning was just able to kind of shove 
not do anything illegal, but was able to influence that as well. What a, just an excellent move from somebody playing single side defense on that. You don't always need a wall. Yeah. Cherry Kiss blasts up into the pack there as the clock expires. Ends up being a 13 point power jam for the Runaway Brides. Brides up over 100 for the bout at this point. So 107.26 here halfway through the second quarter. Knight Mary, number 25 on the jammer line once again for the Runaway Brides. And number 17, Bitch Please, for the Brutal Beauties as we get underway. Full pack, full pack, nobody in the penalty box. No ghost points, that's not for me. And the uh, people it's for already know that. As Mary drifting down into the corner, staggered out pack. And now there, oh, nice move by Mary Wowzers. Yeah, Mary, Night Mary avoiding yeah. a hit there from Colette Razor Cat, able to stay right. on the track. Excellent usage of track geometry, kind of angling down and taking that straight line down into the back straightaway. Big block by Murder Mittens there, however. And just real, I mean, that was. That was a, a sudden, hit. a solid hit, and Mary hit the ground quickly, if that makes sense. I heard it all the way up yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> right. That was really a solid block by Murder Mittens right in the middle of the pack. Bitch Please is out of the pack for the uh, Brutal Beauties now. Mary mid-pack hits the knees and calls it off with Bitch Please barreling down. Also, I think the clock was probably about to run out. Waiting for the score to be... Oh. Step aside momentarily. All right, ends up being four for the brides there. Jammer line for the Brutal Beauties with five minutes to go in the second quarter. That is Evil Twin for the Beauties. Lightning the Queen, your captain, jamming for the first time for the Runaway Brides. Now, barreling down, here comes Lightning into the first turn. Out of the second turn. Evil Twin trying to play a little bit of defense there. Goes in for the hit on Lightning, but Lightning manages to push past and push past those Brutal Beauties blockers in the front. Evil Twin re yelling some instructions to her team, directing them to wall up in the front as Lightning is coming around for scoring pass. Astro Thought and Ash go to play some offense, breaking apart that wall. Now again at the back of the pack, they've got Evil Twin set up again as kind of a little goat at the back. Lightning takes a running leap over a sliding blocker. That was Morph sliding down there, number 33. I, I mean, I'll be honest, that's somebody I'm not familiar with. That's probably because I didn't announce the, the Runaway Brides. Yeah. Oh. Please introduce me to this skater. We have. Um, Actually, fun Mary fact. Morphosis. Yeah, Thank you. Mary Morphosis. This Mary is Morphosis. her first game I would tonight. have to say, well, I announce every bout, and so the fact I didn't know her full name would probably, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm pretty good at remembering names and numbers, says the guy who will quote every skater in the last eight years who's worn number 17. There's been five of them. That number has gone around more than an old penny. It's, it is, seriously. It, it, anyway, like, like I said, see again, like I said earlier about me and jerseys and stuff like that, I get me and numbers, oh my gosh. Are you, you kidding me? The fact that the number zero is allowed in the NFL now, I'm like a kid on Christmas every week. Oh. Woo, crazy. Look at those number zeros, they look sharp. We have a team challenge. Runaway Brides are gonna challenge, so we'll find out what for momentarily. Looks like we've got Mimi Mahler out there representing the Brutal Beauties. And Lightning the Queen representing the Runaway Brides. Lightning is pleading her case. And we'll get to that challenge process momentarily. So at the moment, we're looking at 126 to 26, the Runaway Brides in front. Fun fact there about Mary Morphosis. Uh, yeah. She just graduated from our R2 program. I believe we just tested I was going to say it had to be extremely. It had to be the last graduation. Do we have other new skaters coming up? We do. We uh, So we just tested out two skaters, okay. and they're both now in R3, so they get to participate in different team practices. They I get, get to sub. They get to scrimmage, and then they'll be drafted into a team. We also just had tryouts last week, and I think we picked up seven new skaters, I want to say, who right. are uh, Excellent. Yeah, that was right. I was going to say I glanced down, and that's program. right. The tryouts were last week. So yeah. it's always so exciting. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the process, honestly, like, how would you I, – I asked this last time. It was way wrong. So let's say a skater tries out. How long is a rookie one, which is what R1 is? 
So the Depends, program itself, R1, consists of uh, 12 weeks of training, and yeah. it's all basic skills. And then you test out, and if you pass your test, you move on to R2, where it, which is where we yeah. teach you a little bit more about derby strategy, how to hit, how to take hits. Um, and then you test out of R2 in a scrimmage test. And then after that, um, this new thing that we're testing out this year is uh, R3, which is a little bit of a uh, transition period for skaters. Yeah, the way you explain I was going to say, I honestly have not heard R3. And again, I hear a lot of things around the warehouse, but that's I, I'm not having had nobody having tested out till now. I had not heard that, but that's super great. I love the fact that it's almost like a, you know, like getting them uh, kind of uh, like a like a sub pool, but yes. Like almost, yeah, like a sub pool for these people that can sub into practices only. Yeah, and it gives yeah, them a chance and it's to a get to know the great teams, way, right? And people, the teams a chance and the people, to know them. right? Yeah. Look, honestly, like there's a thing to be said for the fact that like it's hard for me to recognize people in person that wear any kind of makeup or I only see from a distance for me. But yeah, like it's it's a whole different ball of wax when I come to scrimmages and whatnot. You know, sometimes I do if there's a new announcer. Well, I came down with Sookie wanted to announce and it was so cute. Sookie and Yeager sat there with no microphones and announced Love like them. it was an actual bout. And I just sat back there and BS'd and cracked jokes and I was like, the worst part is, is if I ever just sat back here during an actual bout, I'd be doing exactly this. <laughs> I'd be distracting you and making jokes. Anyway, no, I've come to scrimmages and it's always very much, you know, it's very cooperative and yes. that's an awesome thing. So, but yeah, so, but uh, um, that's a great, yeah, the other you said, so it's a 12 week and then R2 is like another 12 another probably? Another 12, yeah. Got it. And so then R3 is probably just I as think it's it goes three weeks, or three I weeks. I want to say. I get it. It's so about short. three weeks. So transition period. Get yeah. your feet wet. Yeah. I love that. Nice yeah. little transition period. And so period. That, that's basically, that's, that's, that's the process of a rookie is they try out recently and then in approximately 27 weeks, you might be seeing them out here. Yeah. Skating their first bout, like Mary Morphosis is tonight, number 33. We got anybody in the crowd who's here for Mary Morphosis? I'm just curious. Wait, we got yeah, a couple. There we go. Getting a couple of yells. All well, right. heck yeah. I love when people come out for their skater's first bout. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, also, if you're, you know, maybe you're spectating tonight and you like what you see and you think, you know, I maybe want to go beat on people a little bit. Yeah. Follow, always, <laughs> follow always, our page. Yes, follow us on all the social mediums. That's like, no matter which one you're on, like, I mean, right now we're on Twitch in the moment, you know. And one second. We're getting the inside scoop here from Bender there. So the Runaway Brides challenging a uh, blocking a down skater penalty. Um, and that is what the challenge was about. Mama Seidel's out there with Mimi and Lightning delivering the verdict that the refs discussed. And Indeed. I believe the penalty is being upheld. Penalty is being upheld. So the Runaway Brides have lost their second half challenge. I mean, excuse me, their first half challenge, but that'd be rough. Sorry, you lose <laughs> your second half challenge too. <laughs> Slam. Yeah, no, sorry. We're not, yeah, exactly. Sorry. You, you can only challenge more penalties if you keep winning your challenge. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Yes, the penalty was upheld. So this actually is going to be Brutal Beauties fans, a power jam for the Brutal Beauty. Well, Mary Morphosis' fans are excited. No, uh, we are 3.41 to go until halftime. We got some Beauties fans down here on the front straightaway. So it's gonna be Princess Slaya out there for the Brutal Beauties. It looks like we've got all four of our blockers for the brides, and we have a star pass right away, which did not surprise anybody, so I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to announce it at this point. Also, the skaters aren't, yeah, I'm not sure if they can hear, whatever. I'm just announcing because still, Murder Mittens fighting to the front of the pack and gets out. Murder Mittens now taking over as your jammer of record during this power jam for the Brittle Beauties, so. Those uh, brides blockers are now all united at the front of the pack, and they come together and just sort of absorb, uh, uh, excuse me, they just absorb murder mittens there into the back straightaway. A huge, there's one of those big blocks. Holly Hood coming clear across the track to deliver a shoulder of pain to murder mittens, and murder mittens calls it off. And we will see if murder mittens got all the points. Murder Mittens got all five, and you'll see that often from experienced jammers. I mean, even, you know, jammers with experience 
You'll see them know that they've gotten past each individual skater, and then you'll see them sit there and count and go, oh, great, and call the jam off, which is exactly what happened. So all five of those points on the power jam for Murder Mittens, 126-31. We've got 2.30 left in the second quarter, which is when my dentist appointment is. Lightning the Queen is going to take over as Jammer immediately. That's a star pass right off the bat for the Runaway Brides. Runaway Brides are uh, at no point taking their foot off the gas because they don't ever do that. <laughs> Lightning the Queen spun to the inside. Wow, great block on the back end there by Princess Slaya. Slaya was kind of pinned in behind a wall of blockers, and Slaya turned away of, of Lightning the Queen with a full head of steam while being blocked again like i said earlier you saw one where lightning could kind of hold slaya back that time slaya spun off of several blockers to deliver the decisive block and just that one point for lightning that one point she got getting past slaya 140 to go in the second quarter this is going to be D and d's nuts number d20 for the first time for the brides tonight on the jammer line that's going to be bitch please for the brutal beauties d is up and gets d gets knocked down to the infield quickly and Bitch Please racing around the outside and is going to take off down the back straight away. Star back on with the star stashed. Bryce, excuse me, the beauties are now stringing together some lead jams here and able to kind of move the needle a little bit as far as the score differential. D&D's nuts finally fights through the pack to get out. So now Bitch Please doing battle at the front of the pack with Holly Hood and Hood wavers. And Bitch Please gets back on the track to go on by. They look there, ends up being four points for the Brutal Beauties. Hello. And Cheryl's, Cheryl's, Cheryl's apparently just dropped in from the roof. That was, that was, a, that was a landing. So unfortunately, however, down there I did see when, and a rare thing when I can see a penalty being called, but cut track is a pretty big gesture. So I happen to know that this power jam for the Runaway Brides is due to a cut track penalty that had been called at least on oh well no they're not challenging it so never mind no team feeling. timeout runaway brides so no cut track penalty on bitch please down there and i saw that popped off jump back on did not get that i do not believe got the final point not sure but i did see that's where it was because hollywood turned to the referee and literally as he was making that i saw hood turn and go uh oh <laughs> so yeah turned to beg for a penalty that was in the process of being dropped and needed not beg so I hood agreed with them also. But yeah, that's what we were looking at from here. Otherwise, yeah, no, yeah, you, you are, it is not cool to be like, I think that was the blank. It's like, first of all, I don't know the rules. Secondly, I can't see that well. Thirdly, there's people whose jobs it is to do that. So yeah, <laughs> I, I do not opine on penalties unless I'm very sure. Uh, we wanted to let you know if you're having fun tonight, if you're watching this, you want to know about our next bout. Next bout is going to be December 7th. December 7th is going to be right here. We're going to have one regular season bout. It's going to be the Coffin Draggers versus the Brutal Beauties. Coffin Draggers sitting at one on one right now, right in the middle of the standings. And they're off tonight. They got the bye. I believe at that one is also going to have our Christmas mashup bout. We are. The I was going to say, do, you know, do, you know, do we know what the teams are? Have they picked? Or I don't think we know yet, but it I'm always sure ends it's up being fun. Be, yeah. It's a fun it's night. Great. Skaters from all the teams, right. you know, playing together, which is always a fun a night for the skaters because we get to skate with people we normally don't. Yeah, Cherry so Kiss here as the jammer for the Runaway Brides. Oh, oh, what a block. Look at that. Taken to the rail there by, I believe, that's Murder Mittens. Derby fans, we'd like to remind you to stay behind the yellow line at all times. Thank you. Like, seriously, that is that is why you stay behind the yellow line is because uh, Cherry Kiss would have hit you on top of your head with her <laughs> helmet. That was a block and a half. We heard somebody behind us go, goodness. So, yeah, people who watch a lot of Derby thought so, too. Meanwhile, Cherry Kiss... None the worse for the wear at the moment, now fighting around for a scoring pass. The Brutal Beauties there try to get together to form a wall, trying to prevent more points from being picked up by Cherry. Able Lightning, to do so, to play yeah. A little bit of offense on the low there. Yeah, you saw Evil Twin was able to break the goad situation, but then uh, Murder Mittens was blocked out of bounds, took a hard hit to the knee pads on that concrete. Had that real sharp report like a, like a firecracker going off. Meanwhile, Cherry Kiss finishes off that scoring pass. The quarter clock has expired, which means we are at halftime. Ended up being a five-point power jam for the Brides to take us up to 
the halftime break. So we're going to step aside for 15 minutes. It'll be a 15-minute halftime break. Your score at the moment, Runaway Brides 132, Brutal Beauties 35. Sheryls and I will be back for the rest of the bout. Like I said, check out those, uh, check yeah. out the photo booth. Get a photo booth, put it up on the gram. Go check out our vendors. Go outside, get some food before they close up for the night. Get a waffle, get a euro. Yes. Check out our... Merch, merch booth. booth. Merch booth. Snacks. Yeah. Snacks. We have merch snacks booth. Yeah. and the snack and merch We finally booth. got some time to tout everything now you that the half has ended. <laughs> this has been a heck of a night. I'll tell you what. I've had a wonderful time announcing, and this bout's not even over. Clifton, thank you as always for announcing ah, for us. Shucks.
Here we go. It is the second half, the beginning of the third quarter. That's going to be Skeletori down to the inside for the Brutal Beauties quickly off the top of the bat. Cherry Kiss is jamming for the Brides here and is not out yet. Is at the very back of the pack still, so trying to get through, spun off there. Skeletori able to kind of dip down and close the door on Cherry there. Excellent little move to get down there. Oh, oh, big clearing block, and now Cherry's out. Somebody broke open the can down there. I did not quite catch that as I was glancing away from the pack, but yeah, somebody went through there and got that opened up. Skeletori now trying to get through the pack, trying to fight, takes the block from NC Jammer. And then down to the inside, we've had the star has been passed, and that's Muerta taking over his jammer, but gets blocked off, outrun to the end of the pack there by NC Jammer. That's Valkyrie on Valkyrie violence. What are we even doing here? Meanwhile, here we go, barreling down the middle of the pack. There goes Cherry Kiss, and that'll do it for the jam. I absolutely had to laugh at that one. There's NC Jammer chasing down Muerta to prevent Muerta from getting out of the pack. And that's the fun of when you see people that are helping teams fill their rosters and you know, feel the full uh, team. Everybody kind of gets to pick the subs for the games when you're not going to have your full roster from people traveling and whatnot. But you run into things like NC Jammer chasing down the person that she captains to keep them from getting out of the pack and blocking them ever so hard. Meanwhile, it was 10 points for the runaway rides. That's the full 13.30 to go in the third quarter with a full 60 in the 30 minute break. Runaway brides are out now. Lead jam here in the third quarter. That's Princess Slaya for the runaway, excuse me, that's the Brutal Beauties. No wonder, no wonder Chasen looked at me so weird. The Brutal Beauties are out and clear. Meanwhile, Princess Slaya now getting out for the brides is Full Metal Anarchist. So Slaya now barreling up the track, wow. Slaya right through, able to get by Novocaine. Able to get by Novocaine and kind of did a little feint and it was able to get Nightmare down. And Slaya finishes off the pass. It's a nine point jam for the runaway, excuse me, for the Brutal Beauties. Why do I keep doing that all of a sudden? As amazing as I haven't said the word that starts with, that rhymes with, you know, beauties, but starts with BR. I haven't said that, but I've called them the runaway brides four times now. What's wrong with me? Meanwhile, way back here, far away from the jammer line and nowhere near it is Cherry Kiss for the Runaway Brides and Evil Twin for the Brutal Beauties. <laughs> Meanwhile, Oops. turned off my mic by accident. Cherry Kiss blasting through the pack, able to get out. Here comes Twin. Twin shaking loose as well. So the beauties here, to, excuse me. Yeah, the beauties, got the beauties. I got it right that time. Yeah, I'm a little shell-shocked. Meanwhile, Cherry Kiss weaving through the pack. Down to the inside. Excellent block by Skeletori. Tori able to get Cherry routed off to the infield, and Cherry's momentum carried her well down into the blue paint. Had to race to get back up in the track and call it off, but was able to do so and kept any points from being scored. Checking now, Gigi flashing up the points to Crash. That's four for the Runaway Brides this time. Jamming next for the uh, Brutal Beauties, that's Bitch Please. And for the Runaway Brides, that's Holly Hood. Holly Hood hard into the back of Princess Slaya. Knocked her out of the way and Holly Hood out and clear for the Brides once again. Now Bitch Please trying to run to the outside, but that door is amply closed by Nova Kane. So Holly Hood now catching up to the pack and is going to run right into a three wall of Beauties defenders, but... The pack was made to reform, so the Beauty's defenders had to also take off. One of those things that the regulators look for is basically to determine where precisely the pack is. So you'll hear them say pack is back, pack is front, etc. And occasionally, as Knuckleface likes to say, pack has effed off. <laughs> I love you, Knuckleface, and I hope you're watching tonight, and I hope everybody watching, yes, Knuckleface was very fond of saying that during bouts, and I'd hear it float up from the infield, and I'd laugh every time. So anyways, meanwhile, so uh, get back to it. Just thinking of knuckle face. What a, what a guy. Uh, we now are going to have an, we're going to have a timeout stepping up to the track as Infidel Castro to give us an official timeout. What we were looking at was, and give me one second here. Let's see. There we are. All right. And we're still tracking it down. You saw that if you were watching here on the stream or in person, you saw the, uh, 
excuse me, saw the discussion going on, and now the, now the score is coming up from the infield, so the brides do get their four points. That's part of what the regulators were talking about down here. During this official timeout, they'll be getting back to it momentarily. I'm going to say, if you want to scoot out and get yourself a stuffed waffle, I can definitely verify. Are they done now? Are they all uh, set? They're still out there, and they're delicious. Okay, they are still there. I'm they're sorry, I thought you were saying, no, yeah, man. I was, everybody that's come in with one of these stuffed waffles has said they're wonderful, and apparently they're, they're so good. everything friendly, which is great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like for somebody like me who used to eat everything under the sun, including things I probably shouldn't and most people would think inedible, you know, to somebody who has to eat a fairly restrictive diet, like oh, I've started to look out for things like, I don't know, can I have these waffles or is it going to make me sick for two weeks, you know? Things like that. Can I have this waffle, or is it going to make me be in the hospital instead of being at the bout tonight? They had a lot of options. Yeah, so. right, and I love that. Again, yeah. I've, I've become extremely cognizant of that, both, both in me getting healthier and also marrying somebody. <laughs> when you have to look out for somebody other than yourself for food, it's like, oh, right, not everybody likes the same trash I do. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're back to it. It is still a power jam for the Brutal Beauties with Skeletor on the jammer line. Some cheers from the Brutal Beauties contingent down here, right here at the head of the front straightaway. So, they briefly had Ash Smasham held back as a goad, but the pack was made to reform, so everybody had to rejoin. Big tumble, second big tumble. Tori down over a downed Cherry Kiss. Now Tori fighting to the front, has that star stashed and tiptoes around, lightning the queen. Tori's Gets able to get out there. One of the Runaway Brides blockers, I believe that's Astro, sent to the infield. Brutal Beauty's choosing to hold Astro as a goad, trying to keep the pack slow. Your mic wandered away. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Meanwhile, there is Tori fighting through the pack and is looking for help. Now up to the high side is her pivot, Evil Twin. Still, still, Tori trying to get clear. Big block there sliding off to the infield was Ash Smasham. Taking a beating down in the trenches as the blockers always do, absolutely. You do start seeing people into the second half start hitting the ground and just taking a second to think about their life choices before getting up and going back to the bench. So it's our life flashing before Right, our exactly. Eyes. It's just like you have to be <laughs> like, man, I know I need to get up, but do I want to keep doing it? Yeah, I do. And then you get up and you're fine. You know, I get Why it. do I do this again? Right, exactly. I do the same thing at pun tournaments. When I'm like 15 minutes deep into a pun battle with somebody at a pun tournament, and I'm just like, you know, bleeding from the nose and things like that <laughs> from the sheer force of thinking up puns. Meanwhile, look it down on the track. That's You've got a Leia. Brutal Beauty's lead jammer once again. Jamming for the Runaway Brides is D&D's Nuts. D&D's yep. Nuts took a hard tumble there on turn one. Still yeah, trying definitely. Trying to fight out past the uh, Beauty's blockers, taking another tumble, as both jammers do, to the infield. So now D gets up and is going to actually take advantage of the staggered pack to get through. D and D's nuts is out, but is not the lead jammer. Slaya opts to call off the jam. Waiting to hear from the refs here to see how many points were picked up during that last jam. It looks like we have verified. Brutal Beauty is able to pick up four points. There we are. During that last jam, score is 150 to 53. Eight minutes left on the third quarter. And the Brutal now. Beauties now have a power jam. That is Evil Twin. There is an unusual amount of jockeying for position going on in the blocker box right now. I mean, I don't know why, but wowzers. I thought the jam started. I seriously thought the jam started is how hard everybody was shifting around in there. And it continues. A lot of shuffling. The, the blocking is, I really keep an eye on the chippiness of the blocking here. That was, there's, it, I, they, I, this feels like it's getting to be a little testy out there. There's some hard hits going on. I'll tell you what, not my place to opine on that necessarily. <laughs> I'm just making an observation that, boy, it feels like the air's changed in here for some reason. Meanwhile, Evil Twin is weaving and weaving and then gets blocked oh, hard by no Lightning the Queen up into lightning. the rail. Now blocked off to the inside, but blocker that blocked her off comes off. Lightning did not, though. Twin to the high side. Lightning looking for an opening, and then Lightning grinds Twin into the rail and waits for reinforcements. Excellent blocker strategy there is just pin the person in place and wait till you got helpers. Twin knows it. 
and Twin is going to let the last few seconds run off the clock. Yeah, you definitely see that most of the skaters now are coming off hands on hips, head down. You see that you see that posture, and part of that is the fact that we're trucking through this quarter very fast. But part of it is again, it, it really is turning into a grind down there. The play has really, the physicality has increased. I can say that without making an opinion. The physicality has increased coming into the third quarter. If you've ever wondered, the hits are very much real. Oh, absolutely. Good goodness me. That's the first thing I tell people. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, honestly, trust me. I wouldn't be there if it was fake. And yeah, but I mean, honestly, the, the physicality has increased. It was not quite this chippy in the first half. And so the lead is held. The beauties are definitely here to play. We see again Nightmare fighting through. I just kind of yammered through that whole uh, whole jam. That was Nightmare for the beauties, picking up your standard and calling it off with uh, Bitch Please forcing the call off. So four points for the brides, 154 to 53. And we've got 5.30 to go in the third quarter when this jam starts. Cherry Kiss is back for the Brutal Beauties, and that's Muerta starting as the jammer for the first time for the Brutal Beauties. Muerta fighting against uh, lightning there, a wall of lightning and ash smash, and it looks like. May comes around, tries to join in on that runaway bride's wall as Cherry Kiss gets out and is the lead jammer. A little bit of Valkyries on Valkyries action there. Both Muerta and May, my teammates there from the Doomsday Valkyries. Yeah, that's, we should point out that the several skaters from the Valkyries and the uh, Bombshells are also skating in this bout as well, proving that you can have a, just a boundless, endless supply of energy. Meanwhile, Muerta to the outside. Cherry Kiss picks up the jammer point, and Muerta lets her drift on by having the advantageous position on the inside of the track. So Muerta knew it was probably going to result in a wreck if she tried to get down there. Yeah, it would have looked like that. Forget who that was in NASCAR about four weeks ago that just went completely off his rocker, just drove two people off the track in the oh last lap. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't remember now. Somebody will walk up here and probably tell me because that's what everybody does whenever I say, I can't remember right now. You're guaranteed one person in the room is going to remember. But yeah, it was about four <laughs> or five weeks ago. And this guy was driving to make the playoffs. He's trying to make the chase in NASCAR. And in the last lap, he just literally like just rammed a guy, nosed him into the wall, and then a guy went by on the inside and he took a left hand, I mean a left hand turn, and just T-boned the guy off the track and won basically in a, in a flaming mess. And they basically like invalidated the result and, and docked him enough championship points that he wouldn't make the playoffs. Oh my goodness. Because he basically just did it trying to get in the playoffs and they're like, <laughs> no. And they, they, yeah, they made it right, but still it was like, yeah, that's what that would have looked like. It would have looked like that dude just turning down the bank of NASCAR and like, I don't like you and driving a guy directly into the infield. Muerta chose not to do that. We're back from the timeout and right, right fighting through full metal, ca full metal anarchist down along the inside to clear for the brides. Slaya there fighting against Nikki, able to get around, but still has a three wall of oh, wait, Able to jammer, get there with the pivot. She's able to get around. Woo. Nice move, able to get through with the pivot. And then Nightmare honestly had a pursuit there for a second, and Slaya was able to outrun Mary to the corner. Metal choosing to call it out as Slaya was coming in back for points that at right. full speed. Excellent, excellent skate work. M Metal able to get through real easy. And then, yeah, Slaya with some fancy footwork. And then again, like I said, Slaya coming off of pirouetting twice, then was able to put on the uh, put on the speed enough to outrun Mary to the corner and not get blocked. And Mary was honestly already going forward. So again, just the athletic feats when you stop to watch sometimes, it's just crazy. That's Cherry Kiss jamming for the Runaway Brides and Evil Twin jamming for the Beauties. Astro Thought taking a tumble there. One of the Runaway Blockers in the back of the pack gets up and rejoins. Both jammers still fighting. Cherry able to get around that last blocker, but Twin was also out. Twin was out and then now is not. Had to get back on behind Lightning. I... I, well, we'll see. I was going to say, I started to say, but I'm not supposed to opine. But we'll have to see if that was a legal transition or not, is what I can say. I will see afterwards, however. Cherry Kiss, meanwhile, finishing a scoring pass. You know, just whatever. NBD. Evil Twin opting to join the Brutal Beauties and make a wall there in the back with her teammates trying to stop Cherry Kiss. 
Cherry Kid is able to take the low. Skates high, skates low. Fighting there against Muerta, trying to pick up those last couple of blocker points, but the jam expires. I saw Antifa getting ready to come out there to skate for the uh, skate on the jammer line for the Brutal Beauties. But penalty called in on Evil Twin. So Evil Twin to the penalty box. It's going to be a power jam for the Runaway Brides. It looks like Evil Twin picked up a stopping, if I remember the, <laughs> the symbols correctly. That may, that's probably what was in front of us. So not a legal transition. I thought it was going to be something along those lines, a cut or a stop or something. So, yep, that would answer that. So it is a power jam, as we said, for the Runaway Brides and your jammer for the Runaway Brides. That's Pretty Hurt Machine. That is Pretty Hurt Machine. I was going to say, got to a distance, and then when you write your number in Ooh. one line with a Sharpie, it's hard for this guy to read it. But that is Hurt, indeed. Pretty Hurt Machine there. Coming on the back of uh, Princess Slaya, I believe it was in Bitch Please, taking a hard hit, but is able to get out. Runaway you know, Brides choosing to hold a goat there in the back. They have Princess Slaya and Bitch Please, as Hurt is coming around for points. Hurt, oh, well, a big collision very at the back of the pack. Skater, yeah, I heard a big, big slam down back there. Bulldozing through a couple right. of blockers there. Gets back up and resets. Calls it off. Hey, interesting stat from the first bout. Uh, Pretty Hurt Machine jammed three times for the Valkyries and never started his jammer. Took over his jammer on a panty pass three times. By the way, I mean, and that's not just a Valkyries thing. Like, I track everything, like, basically. You ask me at any point during most games, I can probably tell you who's jammed the most times, Lee, jam, whatever. It's just, it's like sports, you know what I mean? I'm always, like... I watch an unhealthy, sick amount of sports, ever. You know what I mean? You tell me that somebody can win or lose anything, I'll sit and figure out who karmically <laughs> deserves to win it, as I've said before. But, yeah. You have a Rolodex of fun, fun facts. No, no, you know it. But, yeah, like I said, no, interesting stat. It just, it amused me because, uh, uh, it amused me because Muerta did not start as jammer for the Valkyries and has now jammed for the Beauties. Never started as jammer. And then Hurt never started his jammer, took over his jammer three times. Woo. And just jammed for the brides. Back Little things like that. You love things like that on nights like this. That was Cherry Kiss for the Runaway Brides getting out. And that's getting Killatory through, for right. the brides, or for the beauties, excuse me. Cherry Kiss was able to quickly get out, got her points, and called it. They are checking on that right now. Yeah, so like I said, on the night, Hurt has now jammed four times. <laughs> so, uh, never not statting, as I always say, hashtag never not statting. During tournaments, I will sit in the stands on Twitch, and I will quote stats while the... Sheryls knows this. I will stat from the stands while I'm watching the live stream on my phone in the stands. In the Twitch chat. Yes, in it. the Twitch chat, and I will get in there and drop statistical anomalies like that while I'm supposed to be, I don't know, sleeping? <laughs> Maybe? I mean, what? I'm going to get in the Twitch chat and haunt the Twitch chat. Are you kidding Speaking me? Speaking of the Twitch chat, a yeah. big shout out to everyone uh, following Joining and watching from stream? home. Yeah, Joining us on Twitch. That's don't right. forget that you can subscribe and follow and so that I you don't miss any of this fun yeah. derby action. I looked down and looked up, and we've got another Brutal Beauties power jam to take us into the third quarter break. That is going to be Princess Slaya. Slaya just taking off upon re-entry yeah. to the track. Slaya blocked Such off. Such a powerful skater. Yeah, Slaya got blocked off into the, uh, Slaya got blocked off into the, uh, excuse me, into the infield there and able to spin back up, get around. We'll look I believe in here. that's uh, Gnarly who skated forward. Excuse me, that was Colette Razorclat who skated forward there to provide a little bit of offense for Slaya. The Brutal Beauties opting to hold a goad in the back. That's Pretty Hurt Machine. Colette Razorcat goes up for some offense as Slay is coming around for another scoring pass. Sent to the infield there by NC Jammer. And the jam expires. We'll wait to hear to the refs, from That's the refs right. to see how Partial many points pass. were able to pick be picked up. Hey, if I could ask over there in the uh, camera nest or that side of the warehouse, it looks like we just lost like three lights over there. That end of the track is kind of bathed in darkness if somebody could take a peek at that. I think somebody might have bumped into a light switch. And I don't know if I have time to run over there during the quarter break, but somebody's on it. I can see people running over there. Meanwhile, it was 10 point power jam for the Brutal Beauties. 
10 point power jam for the beauties to take us into the quarter break. So right now your score, 190 to 63. And the runaway brides are in the lead. We will be back momentarily. All right, friends, let's go ahead and take advantage of this fourth quarter break. We're going to go ahead and announce some of our silent auction winners. Starting first with the uh, Riot Tattoo Certificate. Patty, if you are here, you have won a tattoo cert certificate. Again, that is Patty for the Ray a Riot Tattoo Certificate. That's right. We, we got Patty here just out of curiosity. You are the lucky winner of the Scient Auction. If you are here, head on down to the auction. Yeah, we'll be up here, actually, so head up to the announcer's nest. So, meanwhile, I'd also like to let you know about the Lost Dutchman Tattoo, and the winning a bidder for the Lost Dutchman Tattoo is Matt. Matt, we got a Matt is the winner for Lost Dutchman, so... We got Matt is here. I got a nod down here from one of our uh, skaters down here. So Matt, you're the lucky winner. Head on up this away. Next up, it looks like we have a Switchblade Salon certificate. That is to our very own, one of our very own skaters here, Strange. Uh, Damon, Damon, if you're in the house, you have won a Switchblade Salon certificate. Please come see us. And our last prize from the silent auction tonight, Pip Coffee and Clay Goodies. It's a date night. And if you bid on this, you know what that is. And the winner of uh, Matthew Lost Dutchman. We're all sorry, that's down there. Oops, there go my glasses. And the winner of the uh, Pip Coffee and Clay Goodies date night is Sydney. That's Sydney. Is that Sid? I don't know. I'm wondering if it's that Sid. I was going to say, Sid. that is. It might be. Well, anyway, Sydney. Uh, 
Well, okay, Sid cool. out in the blocker box, so but that Sid, one. you've Sid won a. I don't know what you won, but you won something. Oh, that was the uh, that was the Pip Coffee and Clay Goodies date night. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's like a date night. Different so Sid, y'all. Different, different Sid. Sid. Just okay, kidding. Excellent. False alarm. There we go. All right, there we go. We got our silent auction giveaways. Wonderful. I love giving away prizes. Looks like we raised a pretty good chunk of change for the. Honestly, I like it. I like it. I do like how that played out. Wonderful. Back to the action here yep. on the beginning of the fourth quarter. That's Cherry Kiss as the lead jammer for the Runaway Brides. We it, are looking at. I believe it's a. Oh, yeah, no, I was no, going to no, say. It's it, not it, a power it, jam. I see Bitch Please bitch, there. Bitch Please, yeah. I was going to say Bitch Holding Please had it stashed. I knew we started with panty. two. So now Puts trying it to back, get back on her on. head here. Gets around Ash trying to make a break for it. But Hurricane May gets in front. Cherry Kiss yeah. coming around for another scoring pass. Able to get through. Uh, Murder Mittens there. Picks up all the points and decides to keep going. Brides recycling around, determined to hold Bitch back. And then, oh, look out. Lightning gets knocked over by Bitch, please. Lightning back up. Looks like that was hopefully incidental. Meanwhile, up to the jammer line for the first time this time around. It was 13 for the Runaway Brides, by the way. They've broken over 200. Jamming for the first time. No, she's not. Oh, that was going to be maximum Almost going to be hover maximum drive. hover drive, but it is now a power jam for the for the uh, power jam for the runaway brides. Checking in, making sure there were no points there for the beauties. There were not. So Hollyhood, Hollyhood now with the jammer line for the runaway brides. Hollyhood tries to take the low. Tori says, "Not today, friend." Hood quickly up, able to get around some of those last few Brutal Beauties blockers. Pack remains slow in the back there. Brutal Beauties blockers split into two pairs as Hood comes around and takes the low and is out. And now the, brut now the uh, Brutal Beauty is able to get together at the front of the pack and take off on block. Mary's trying to get up there and kind of be the little ball in the paint can. Mary gets knocked down for her efforts, though. So they're trying to play keep away now and see if they can keep Hood from catching up, getting through if they can. Now Hood's going to, however, take advantage of the staggered pack, but then kind of weaves to the outside and is able to get Razor back in front of her again. Now Hood tries to get through. Block down to the inside and gets up to check. And that'll do it as the clock expires. We're going to take advantage here of this quick break while the jammers reset, while the skaters reset. Um, just letting everybody know that this is last call for our merch booth, for our snack bar, and for our drink booth. That is so, right. So, last, last call. call. Last call. Get down there if you want to refill that souvenir cup one more time. But do so responsibly, you know. You know what we're saying. Meanwhile, we got Cherry Kiss on the jammer line. And right next to Cherry That's is Max. Maximum Overdrive. Max number 12 jamming for the Brutal Beauties here in the uh, fourth quarter. Max fighting against those runaway brides blo blockers. Max, a very strong skater, able to push those that entire wall up, but not able to get out. Cherry Kiss, lead jammer for the runaway brides. Cherry Kiss coming around for more points. And is going to run right up into Murder Mittens there, able to get her pinned up into the wall. Now gets some help from NC Jammer to the front of the pack, but the Brutal Beauties are able to recycle as well. There's 18 seconds left here in this jam. Meanwhile, a couple skaters down, uh, many more skaters down as I finish that. And six skaters on the ground at once there. That's pretty good. Max Meanwhile, able to get out there past Lightning is... Trying to keep this to one Trying to catch up, yes, as Cherry Kiss decides to call it. Checking on it, and Cherry does pick up those nine points like one would figure. So there are late penalties trickling in, and I'm going to see some blockers leaving the track as penalty takers are set. Double checking, double checking. Pink's down one. 
That's going to be Bitch Please jamming for the Brutal Beauties, and that's Holly Hood running, jamming for the Runaway Brides. Holly Hood sent to the infield there by Evil Twin. Bitch is out as our lead jammer. Hood still fighting there against those Brutal Beauties blockers, but the Runaway of Runaway Brides blockers holding back a little bit to play some. Oh, Bitch Please trying to get past Nova and Dees to score some points. Now a bunch of skaters down, a couple skaters down on the infield. Skater had fallen on the track. Track Monster grabbed a hold of somebody there. Not sure who it was, uh, but got a hold of the back of their jersey and horse collar tackled them, so that's illegal in the NFL. Bitch choosing to call it as Hood was coming around for points yep. with speed. We saw that, and I see that wonderful signal from the infield. We got double jammer down. That means we had penalties on both jammers during the process of that jam. Both teams will be sitting a blocker right. as we can't have a jam without jammers. Yeah. Well, we could, but it would be, you know, pointless. It would just be blockers. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's a pun. That's a good pun. It would be pointless. Sorry. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> well, it's because I, I, you know, I let the glance linger, and that's when you figured out that he was like, you know, honestly, Freya Hugs does the same thing. Like, <laughs> Freya will look over, and I say something innocuous, and it'll just glance over, and I'm going, and then be like, <laughs> what? What, what did I? What, and have to like work through what I just said and like replay it in their head to figure out what the joke was. Uh, sorry, sorry, I use people as a foil. I'm awful. I give everything to the bit. No, we love the puns. Meanwhile, there goes Cherry Kiss, lead jammer. Slaya's right on the pursuit though, right out behind. Cherry is gonna try to duck in and just get those back end points. Like I, Ch Cherry does that a lot. I do see yeah, Cherry. Cherry Kiss yeah, Cherry Kiss came up on a uh, strong pink wall there and decided to call it off because Slayo was right on her heels. And Cherry does get those two points. So, you know what? You get them any way you can. So get that body part where it needs to be. Nightmare once again on the jammer line for the Runaway Brides. Both teams sitting a blocker for this jam. It looks like both teams picked up penalties during that last one. So it's yep. going to be a Three on three. Looks like it. Skeletori right here in front of us on the jammer line, taking off behind Nightmare. There's a party bus outside, and they just fired up the music, so somebody's party is about to get party-ish. Tell you what. Meanwhile, Nightmare played a little bit of a jammer defense there in the beginning against Tori. Yep. And Tori able to get out on the low is your lead jammer. Big tumbles happening there in the back. And we're going to have a, t a stoppage in play.
right, everybody. Well, skater back to the bench under her own power. That is number D20, D's and D's nuts. There was a very, very violent collision in the back straightaway between D and Pikachu on the Brutal Beauties. And we are so glad that D is back to the bench. Getting attended to by the medical staff, back to the bench on her own skates, which is always great to see. So check on her, getting help by the team down to a seat on the bench. Just a really, I'm sure, honestly, real talk, you probably heard me say on mic, oh, and that's a, that was a violent collision. So I am extremely glad that D seems to be well enough to at least get back to the ding dang bench. That is good to see, and we love our medics, man. I'll tell you what. Again, I was going to say shout out to our yeah, medics. Thank once you again, if you know here. any medics, help us out because when we need them, we need them quick, and they jumped right into action there. Meanwhile, back to the action here. We have Cherry Kiss jamming for the Runaway Brides, and that is Muerta jamming for the Brutal Beauties. Muerta trying to fight against that last three wall of Runaway Brides. Receives a little bit of help from, I believe that's gnarly playing offense, but the pack reforms, both jammers still in, both jammers still trying to fight back, fight to get out. Cherry Kiss stuck behind a couple of skaters, but is able to maneuver high, then low, and is out as the lead jammer. Took Muerta a while. being blocked one-on-one -on -one there by Lightning. I'm gonna say just the Cherry now making tracks to get back around and try and salvage some points out of this jam, it does so. Able to at least get there, got at least a couple, so we'll check on that, yeah. Took, I would say it took a while, but yeah, got out with 11 seconds left, made it around the track and got points. 11 seconds is enough, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Not for me, Yeah. not for me, I'm not a fast skater, <laughs> but there's plenty of fast skaters in the league and Cherry Kiss is definitely one of them. I would need like 20 seconds, I need two minute jams. Yeah, there to you get go, back right, around. right, exactly. <laughs> I don't like going fast. Jamming up next, that's going to be Nightmare for the Runaway Brides, and that is Skeletori for the Brutal Beauties. Yeah, six Nightmare minutes. Nightmare takes a low. Immediately runs into the pivot there and just kind of gets ground yeah. to a stop. I did not catch who the pivot was, trying to catch that number as it got spun around. But yeah, great block on Mary to keep Mary pinned in. Yeah. Still Tori, working it. Here comes Novo with uh, try to get a little help. Tries to get Mary, just dispenses with the blocker herself. Now it's Mary. Oh, Mary tries to just shove past. Just kind of gets into a hand fight with Light Evil Twin. They both fall. Mary gets out as lead jammer as Tori fights out as well, and it's called off. So Tori all that, was my goodness. Tori yes. was moving. She saw her chance and she took it. Jamming, I believe, for the first time tonight for the Brutal Beauties. That's going to be Murder Mittens, number 23. Yep. And we did pick up a penalty on Mary right here in front of us. And uh -huh. I think that was one of those. That was honestly, whatever the penalty ended up being, that was just, they got tangled up. I think it was a, right uh, in, in arms, it yeah. looks like. Both fell, yeah. Exactly. Arms is not surprising. It just kind of, I think they were trying to push, and you get it. Yeah. Meanwhile, power jam, however, as we said, Murder there goes Murder Mittens. Murder Mittens, out. Beauty so Murder Mitten's already out. 48 seconds left Bride in the power jam. Separated. That's Astro Thought that they're trying to hold as a goad. Astro Thought, a very strong skater, just bulldozes past yeah, Evil Twin. Yeah, I loved Twin, it. Astro Thought, that was a... to join her blockers, their blockers, excuse me. Poor, yeah, that was uh, not the best choice to pick for a, uh, a goad was Astro Thought, who basically just rammed through there at the... Uh, into the jam. We are checking on a few things down here. We've got Murder Mitten still out there with 12 seconds left to go in the power jam. I'm just going to say it. There's a Brutal Beauty skater on the bride's bench who got knocked down. So we're going to check and make sure everybody's okay. The medics are heading over there as we speak. Do not see who it is from here. They're up and talking and now heading off. Okay. So there must have been something procedural there. I'm not sure, but. Uh, this Princess Slaya and just crawled over to the bride's bench. Medics came over to check on her, and I think she, everything was okay. So, something procedural. But, yeah, that was honestly was pretty great out of Astrothought to get goaded in, and Astrothought's like, get off me. Love it. Astrothought, a very challenging very, skater to go. Very, just yes. very, Very so. strong. Fun fact, by the way, Astrothought also does uh, Muay Thai. So it's Muay Thai? Yes, I might be mispronouncing it, but like yes. Muay, Muay Thai, I think is right. Thai? I think I said Muay Thai too much today. Yeah, Muay Thai. But, so. yeah, so. That is very, awesome. Very right? Well, yeah, okay. that, yeah, well, there you go. Able to just break through some people <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to get in your way. And Astro's like, I'm sorry, you must not know me. No, no. I do Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> I do. No. Yeah. 
You know, really, like, it really, I, and we do have a challenge. Is it a challenge? I'm sorry. It looks like a challenge. I see Slay and Lightning up there. Well, let's, let's, um, let's, not sure who one challenged. second, let me check. But we'll be sure to get the inside scoop as soon as we learn from the refs, and we'll uh, update everybody here listening on the live stream and also here in the warehouse. We'll let you know what's going on. All right, so there was a brief moment there. It was an OTO. So, yeah, obviously so we, that was, we were a little confused because we saw the, the coaches come forward as if it was a challenge, but it was not. So we were not misinformed. Meanwhile, we'll take a moment, however, to remind you one more time that your after party in about four minutes and 15 seconds of derby time, plus any penalty jams, uh, is at Short Leash. Short Leash, and they keep their kitchen open. You might go, but Short Leash closes at 9. Uh-uh, they stay open till like 10.30, 10.45. Honestly, they've stayed open later if everybody's kind of still ordering food. You know why? Because they're awesome people, and I will tell you several reasons why they're awesome people. Before they started doing our after parties, that's how great Short Leash is. So, yeah. Wonderful. Shout out to Kat and Shout Short out. Leash. Yes, they're the best. That's the first place I won my first pun tournament with Short Leash. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. A lot of love for that place. That's the after party locale, as it will be every bout this season. And like I said, they stay open late, kitchens open late. And then if you can't find a party in Melrose on Saturday night, once they close, you're doing it wrong. Come join us. Absolutely. They have hot dogs. Everything, donuts, hot, they hot dogs, beer, they got donuts, cocktails, beer, all kinds of food, desires. not just hot dogs in any way, shape, or form also. No, it's important to say they have everything you could possibly want. Meanwhile, as we were talking, a big fight to get out, and Skeletori does finally get clear. May, jammer for the uh, runaway bride. The bride's going to stick the helmet cover on. Now, they both had stashed it, which took a second to kind of get my bearings. Tori uh, transitioning around the uh, low there against some blockers. Gets back on and calls it because May was right there. Yeah, well, Tori got blocked off by Hurt, and again, Hurt very wise to what was going on and knocked Tori to the infield. So May closing in and was able to pick up points on the pursuit. We're checking now. There are three points for both teams. So, yeah, there you go on the pursuit. As mentioned there, that's a great block by Pretty Hurt Machine on the front of the pack. There, a, a block that scored three points for her team. What do you know about that? Anybody can affect the score. Meanwhile, we've got Princess Slaya for the Brutal Beauties, and that's going to be NC Jammer for the Brides this time. With uh, be about 2.30 to go here. Once again, that's do I already said that joke. If I did it twice, Freya would kick me in the butt. NC Meanwhile, Jammer is out as the lead jammer there. Is indeed, and we've got your Beauties Jammer is behind the blockers, which is... Uh, Cherry and I believe that's Nightmare, yeah. Yeah, it's back there. Wall. Ash and Lightning, I believe it is, up in the front. Well, and now, oh, trying to get oh. through is Slaya, but uh, Lightning, oh, goodness me, that was hard too. Slaya is getting up, and once again, just good to see somebody get up after a hit like that. Lightning fell into Slaya, and then Slaya got up, and I think it was Nightmare that went right over Flaya again. Slaya again, and I guess it was just Freya's, uh, gosh, Slaya. I was thinking Freya, but it's all Slaya, obviously. I heard her wrist guards hit the ground, I think was the thing I heard. It was a hard tumble. Yeah, yeah. my goodness. But everybody's up. Everybody is, everybody's skating a little slowly, but everybody is up. That was one of those where everybody, by the end of the jam, I think everybody's like, yeah, you know what? Let's just breathe for a minute. Hearing a couple of different penalties there called out by the refs, it looks like each team will be sitting one blocker. It looks like pink picked up their directional block and white picked up an arms. Looking at just a, a little more than a minute to go in regulation here as we close in on the end of the bout and we've got evil twin. No, we're going to have a timeout. See, that's again, like that's how you jokes, jinx things. Well, it looks like we're almost done. <laughs> Official timeout. So yeah, Freya Hugs was out there game executioning right now. I would say Freya did that on purpose because I said that. But Castro would never do that. Never. Never. How could you even suggest something like that of Castro? No, Castro is unbiased. That is our coach. I
We're back to the action. We've got a minute 15 to go in regulation. That's we got Evil a Jammer Twin race. and Demay, Evil Twin for the Brutal Beauties. That's May jamming for the Runaway Brides. May checking over his shoulder. Evil Twin keeping up. May is May is going extremely fast what and making jump. it look like she wasn't. Honestly, May just I mean looked like was leisurely checking over her shoulder, but that I mean just moves that fast. A I'm flying leap through the air. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure May just jumped part of the straightaway. Right. And if somebody can explain the physics of yeah, me no, exactly. to that, like I May, about that, what I would really May just it. did is May just jumped the <laughs> coping backwards like Saquon Barkley, sailed through the air, landed it, and called the jam called the jam successfully. So right, exactly. So now now May gets a Nike ad with witness written backwards on it. Yeah. That is so I do the my joke my references only get more hyper niche as the as the night goes on. I swear. <laughs> it's like, the exhaustion. We got a, hey, you know what? I got more time to think of some because here comes Castro. We got another official timeout to talk that over. You can see a little confusion down there. And I uh, think the timeout. Oh, we got to check on us. Here we go. One second. The physics Let me of that jump. Get quiet here for a moment. Oh, I thought it was because they were discussing the physics of May's jump. I thought that's what we were reviewing. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, there was an OTO to talk about what did we just see? No, there were talking points. So three points for the brides there after that OTO. Checking it out. Mama Seidel up here. I, and again, family affair. Mama Seidel goes down there. Mama Seidel comes up to check in on the points challenge. And then our eye in the sky crash goes down, who of course is crash is uh, Mama Seidel's child. Wonderful. Mama Seidel started as a Mama Seidel started as a minor assaults parent of Rainbow Crash, and now Mama Seidel is the co-captain of the Regulators, and Rainbow Crash is a full-time adult league referee while also skating for the minors. We love them. So you know what I mean? Yeah, we love and we love them and their whole family. And Crash frank. also skates with the adults sometimes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so all. Yeah. Skater. Yeah. Anyway, all Back of them. Back to the yeah. action here. That is Bitch Please out as lead jammer for the Brutal Beauties. Cherry Kiss as the jammer for the Runaway Brides. Bitch Please hits the back of a very strong Brides wall and opts to call it, it as Cherry Kiss was on her heels. No, I was going to say, you can't forget to mention Ruby, who is the most enthusiastic dancer ever invented, right? Love Ruby. You love, yeah, again, yeah. And then Ruby comes and cheers on everybody. But Ruby cheers for Mama Seidel when Mama Seidel's refing. So <laughs> I love it. Pom pom shakes for a good ref. You got to love that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we're back out there. Quarter clock has expired during the break, so this is our last regulation jam. It's going to be Skeletory for the Brutal Beauties, and racing around the outside is Hurricane May. Now May is going to put on the pursuit, keep it fun. May to the inside. Oh. May takes it over and is now going to coast in front of Skeletory, and May calls it off, so it's all in good fun. Everybody's skating into a stop. No points for either side, so... We'll check on the provenance of penalties here and see if that's going to be our final action for the evening or not. Find out where we are going and find out for sure if the brides will be joining the Valkyries at the top of the standings. <laughs> and that's it with the final whistle. Your head referee, Mama Seidel's made it official. They're running on away. Your final score, 242 to 78. The runaway brides remain perfect for the last several years, as we always are fond of saying. Brides are heading on around. Come on down, trackside fans. Slap Give hands with your favorite skaters. That's right. As the brides head around. So yeah, so let's break it down for you one more time. Runaway Brides and the Doomsday Valkyries are both now 2-0. and oh, And at the top of the standings, Coffin Draggers were idle tonight, 1-1. One and, one. and now your Brutal Beauties and your Bombshells are currently at 0-2. Oh and, and as I said earlier, extensively, 0-2 oh means nothing, nothing. There are four teams out of the five that make the playoffs, so nobody's out of it at this point. Absolutely not. The season is yet young. So now here come the Brutal Beauties, as we mentioned. The Beauties were right there with it. Let's slide the fight track. Up till Let's the end, give them a high yeah. five. Beauties coming on around. Fantastic to see another great effort as well. Another great bout tonight. Wonderful. So the standings honestly could have been real cluttered, but they're pretty even now that everybody's been through two bouts. Yeah. 
And we move forward. Our next bout, as we mentioned, is going to be on December 7th. It's the Coffin Draggers versus these Brutal Beauties. And That's don't forget also that holiday mashup bout. Holiday mashup bout, which is always, it's super fun. And honestly, like, it, y y y you might say, like, why would I stay for a mashup? Honestly, it's just a good time, and usually everybody's having, and it, if you don't have a rooting interest to stick around, you you can just stick around and have fun with this. Yeah. It's, a, it's a hoot to stick around for. It really it's is. It's a good time. Thank you so much, Cheryl. I also want to thank Gaba Ghoul for announcing. We always love having Gaba here. Gaba has to, uh, Gaba comes down and announces and has to book it for to host that, uh, the, the drag show at Boycott. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, honestly, it's like, yeah, cool. Stay as long as you possibly can, and we love you. So... Wonderful when they're able to make it down. Wonderful to announce a few Cheryl's. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Always been, a been honored to announce Fantastic evening, as we always say. If you did fill that souvenir cup one too many times, don't drive your car, because that's just really freaking stupid. And if I have to, I'll drive your butt home. Don't test me. I've done it. Ask my friend Shannon from work. <laughs> so I have a long standing with my friends. As you call me any time, if you think you're up a creek and you need a ride, and I, my friend Shannon called me about 2.45 one time and said, I'm stranded in Sunny Slope. And I was like, be there in a bit. Jumped into my jean shorts and ran down to my car. So, yeah. No, honestly, like, no, I mean this not sarcastically. If you feel like you've had too much to, you know, souvenir cup tonight, no, really, come ask me. I will drive you home. Seriously, I mean Clifton, it. Clifton, you're a good friend to have. Yeah, and do what I can, you know what I mean. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get out of your hair. Everybody is mostly out of here, and nobody's listening to me, surely, by this point. Surely, surely. get it. Surely. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, don't have forget to join night. us at Shortly, right. everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us.